This is Mavericks All Access with Omaha Athletics, hosted by Anna Bellinghausen. Welcome into Mavericks All Access. I'm Anna Bellinghausen along with Coach Tim Walters, also Sophia Green. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Well, first of all, congratulations on winning the team's first ever Summit League title and, of course, punching your ticket to the NCAA tournament. We saw it here live at Coniglia, just the emotions and everything that came around um, that moment for you guys. What was it like with all the fans rushing onto the field and just getting to hold that trophy? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's obviously an experience that we've always wanted and Every young soccer player like dreams of going to the NCAA tournament. So seeing the fans rush the field and just knowing that our dreams came true, it was awesome. Yeah, getting to go to the NCAA tournament is awesome, but not everybody gets to have that experience at home like we did uh, this past weekend. So being here with all the student athletes cheering them on and them rushing the field afterwards, it was a pretty cool mo- moment for us. And the road to the championship was not necessarily easy for you guys nor is it easy for anybody you beat North Dakota and then SDSU you guys have an amazing match against and then of course the championship itself was not easy goes to PKs how would you describe that journey we'll start with you coach of getting to the title game yeah it's tough it's tough Um, especially the way it was set up this year where we had to go win a game on Friday uh, night against North Dakota which is a really good game and we didn't score till late in the game and then Having to go play South Dakota State when they're on short rest, um, I think an incredible achievement for the group. It's the last undefeated team in the country at their place, having lost at home in 40 games. um, Pretty cool achievement for the group, and and they had to work really hard for it. Um, Nothing has really come easy uh, for this group, obviously. Um, And as as we got ready for PKs on Saturday, my message to them was like, of course, this is coming down to PKs with how the season's gone. So uh, a lot of challenges, really, really tough uh, for them, but they've, they've been incredible throughout. And Sophia, for you, just how much grit did it take from a player's perspective to go out there and compete every single game one after another? Um, It takes a lot. Um, We had a lot of Friday-Sunday games, and going into the tournament, we had to play on Friday, and South Dakota State had a bye, so they were pretty fresh on that Sunday game. So it was hard going into that game and knowing that we were going to be a little bit more tired than they were, and we kind of knew that we had to get a goal, we had to win, we had to stay strong, and kind of just give it our all the whole game and get a result. (laughs) Coach talked about it a little bit, but those PKs out there on the field, what was the message from from the players themselves just to everyone out there on the field and what this could mean um, winning in PKs? Yeah, well, we knew um, if we won those PKs, we were going to the NCAA tournament, and everyone wanted that. We all fought so hard for that in practice and the games, and we knew that it was probably going to come up to PKs. Um, ORU was a great team. They went into PKs with Denver. Um, so luckily we were able to see that and kind of scout that in a way. And everyone just stayed positive, had the confidence we needed, and we got the PKs done. <laughs> coach, this is your sixth season as head coach. You spent six seasons as an assistant. When and where was the groundwork laid down so you guys could have this team go to the NCAA tournament today? Gosh, it probably starts before I got the, the head coaching job here, you know, and, and the work um, we did with Jason Mims on the men's, men's side, um, you know, really laying down a vision of how do you build up in, in those years and prepare a team to, for that moment. And it's, I think a lot of people want, it, want a quick fix for things, um, and that's not the way college athletics works. Um, you can't do that. So we, we worked hard and we built up that program on the men's side for, for those six years, and then the seventh year after I left, they went to the NCAA tournament for the first time. So it's a lot of work and the way recruiting works in women's soccer thankfully it's changed in the last couple of years but all, all the seniors and juniors on our team they, they were recruited as freshmen and sophomores in high school so that's about the time I got hired so it, it's it's a long grind um, but you do it with good people and as long as you bring good people and usually good things happen. And looking back on your journey when you first got this job in 2016 versus where this program is now what have you learned about yourself as a leader? Oh, gosh, it's just constantly always learning. First, it's a lot harder than you ever think it's going to be. Um, you know, being a, a college head coach is a difficult, difficult task. I tell a lot of people when they ask me that it's about 
5% coaching soccer and about 95% managing your team. Um, learned a lot. I've learned that the most important aspect of it is, are the relationships. Um, you got to have players that want to play for you. If they don't want to play for you, you're not going to get the results you want. And I think Soph's a really good example. Um, you know, she's a she's a center forward who's dealing with an injury. Who we've we've played out wide this year. And if you look at the South Dakota State game, how much we asked her to defend was probably more than she's ever been asked to defend in her life. Um, and she bought in and did a great job. And we've just had a lot of players who have bought into the message. And and you really got to concentrate on your relationship with the players um, for that to happen. And Sophia, you started your journey at UNO in 2020. Great year for sports, right? Went <laughs> yes. through a lot of adversity there, of course. How did you see your team grow throughout the seasons you've been a part of up until right now? Um, I think it's been really easy because my class has stayed pretty consistent. And coming in, I had a big class. And unfortunately, last year's class was also a big part of our team and my freshman year and my sophomore year. So it was really tough losing them, but I'd like to say that every year we haven't really lost, um, like, we've lost key players, but we haven't lost, like, the biggest key players on the field and stuff. So we've still had those spots filled, and it's been really easy having the newcomers come in and, like, filling those spots and stuff. We definitely miss everyone that we have lost, but it's been nice to still have pretty consistent players out on the field at all times. You've had a lot of success in your career at Omaha so far. What do you think has been key to that for you as a player? Um, definitely the players around me and the coaching. Um, Best answer ever. <laughs> yeah, I have it, Tim right likes here, that. So. <laughs> It's been really easy because I feel like Tim has trusted me. I have trust in Tim. I have trust in all the coaching staffs. We may always butt heads sometimes, but we have the best interest in mind. Um, my ideal goal out on that field is to win the game that I'm playing. So as long as I have that in mind, I think that's what's best for me, for the coaches and the team. <laughs> okay, coach, how have you seen Sophia grow now from her first season in 2020 until today? Uh, yeah, probably no one on the team has matured as much as Sophia has in the last, in the last three seasons. So, um, you know, I, I think she's always been a player who, who likes to have the ball and who, who likes to create things for the team. But how mature she's been this season in, in dealing with injury and being positive for the team has, has been really um, helpful for us. Um, but also in the big moments, wanting to have the ball for us and wanting to be on the field and wanting to be that player. And, and I think a lot of it, you know, when, when Sophia came in, she, she wanted to do all those things as a player, but her, her number one priority was also to score goals. She, she really wanted to score goals, and I think she's been a lot become more mature and more selfless and about, okay, I'm going to do this other job for the team too. And if I can score goals, great. Um, and I, I like that part of it too. <laughs> she can score goals, great. Um, but she's just really matured as a player the last two or three seasons. Third appearance in the Summit League title game for you. You finally get one. Does it feel like this was a long time coming? Did it feel like almost a relief to get that done? Yes, definitely a relief. You don't want to lose three finals. Definitely, you don't want to lose three finals in a row um, and then it becomes a theme. But I think the big thing this year, it felt like there was more pressure on us this year. You know, not necessarily going into the tournament, but once it was set up, the final playing Oral Roberts at home, you felt like this was the opportunity and this was the chance. And, and the whole idea for the whole week was to convince the team that this was just another game, which was a pretty difficult task because I'm pretty sure they didn't believe me the whole time. Um, but to have the opportunity at home to go to the end of the tournament is not something you get very often. So I think the other years we were maybe just happy to be there and happy to be in that game and happy to have those opportunities. But I think this is the year where we felt like, okay, this is the one, this is the one we're going to win. Why do you think it was this group of girls to accomplish that this year? Oh, gosh. Um, it's definitely, it's not, it's not just this group of girls. It's the, obviously the groundwork that was laid before them by, by our previous groups. But um, this group of girls are just, I thought they were ready. You know, they've played a lot of games together, um, kind of like Sophia alluded to earlier. You know, we, we've brought in a group, and the core of the group has now been together for three years. And, yeah, we're missing some big pieces that have graduated and those things. But when you keep the core of the group together, you're also able to focus on different things at training all the time. We're not teaching the basic things. We're not teaching tactically the, the most basic things. We're able to focus on bigger stuff and more things in training every day. And I kind of forget how lucky we are to have this same group together the whole time. And you're not dealing with, you know, okay, we got these three or four freshmen coming in and starting, and we got to teach them exactly how we play and all those things. When you have 10 returners out on the field, they're able to kind of get that message across without the coach having to do it, and it's made life a lot easier for me. Sophia, did this always feel like the year that you were like, okay, we're ready to take this next step, go to the NCAA tournament and punch our ticket? 
Um, I've always had that mindset since freshman year. Like, like Tim said, we have the core of the team here. We're not changing that much. So I always had belief that we could get here. And it was honestly just a dream come true to find out that we were going to play ORU at home. And we knew that was going to be a better matchup than playing Denver at home or South Dakota State at home. So it was really nice knowing that we were going to play ORU and that it was going to be on our home field. So now you guys are going to South Bend, playing a number one seed in Notre Dame. Coach, for you first, what do you tell your team before that? How do you get them prepared mentally? Um, it's a tough task. You don't lie to them, I tell you that much. You, you, you make sure they know how good Notre Dame is, which is a really good team, a top four team in the country right now, and that it's going to be a challenge. Um, but we've had lots of challenges. Um, we're going to go put our best foot forward. Um, yeah, it's going to be really, really tough. I think we know the reality of the situation. It's going to be pretty tough on Saturday. But I think if we go out there and we work hard and enjoy the experience, then you know, anything can happen. Um, but yeah, Notre Dame's a, a very, very good team. But this is, a, this is what you're going to get in the first round of the NCAA tournament. We were never going to draw a home game against somebody who, who was on probably level playing terms with us. It was always going to be a big school on the road. Um, and you can see the shock on the team's face because our, our school popped up first. Omaha popped up first, and you can see the one down below it, and they're like, oh, boy, here it comes. Um, so it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a very big challenge, but I think what a great opportunity, what a great learning experience for us, and, and hopefully it prepares us for the future. You said a great learning opportunity, and just to be out there on a pitch with a team like Notre Dame and playing at that level in the NCAA tournament, what does it mean to you as a player? Um, it honestly means everything. Uh I have two girls on that team from my club team, so it'll be really cool to see them. And I've talked to them a little bit. They have a great team. Um, they have one of the top midfielders in the country, so it'll be amazing to just play against players like that and to play against a high level to test, test how we are as a team and really show a lot of true colors. For sure. Win or lose, just amazing to be there in the NCAA tournament. Um, for you as a coach – Back when you took this job in 2016, from right now, did you ever think you'd be in this spot so quickly? Is it quickly? Jeez, it feels like <laughs> it's been forever. Uh, no, I, I'm kidding. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought we would. I, I thought this is about the time we should. You know, five, six, seven years in was kind of the time frame I set for, my, for myself as, okay, we want to be in this spot at, at this point in time. Um, we maybe got a little closer than I thought we would in the first year or two, which was great. But I also think if you look back, you know, a month ago, I would have, I would have, said no way you know we were two eight and four um I remember having a conversation Sophia with Sophia in in Colorado when we were we were struggling and, and she started talking you know discussing red shirting and, and those types of things and the conversation with her is I thought hey if you're healthy I and playing for us I think we can still give this a run and I think we can still give this a go uh but even still again at two eight and four it's probably just not something that crosses your mind a lot you know we were thinking about how we're going to get in this conference tournament was was the first thought so once you get there you know like they say anything can happen um this is probably the timeline we sent but doing it this year it, it feels more validating after everything the group's been through Sophia with all the adversity this team has faced not only this year but the years past and how you guys have persevered every single year what do you think it is about the identity of Omaha soccer um, I think it's our bond and relationship as players and as teammates. Um, we're a pretty close team. Everyone has good relationships with everyone. We're all willing to fight for each other, and I think that's what has gotten us to where we are right now. We're fighting for those players on the bench. We're fighting for our fans. We're fighting for the players who can't play for the rest of the season. So it's been great to be able to put it all out there on the line for them and for ourselves. Well, it's just Sophia's junior season. You still have her for, what, one, maybe even two years after this. We're hoping for two. <laughs> right. What kind of dynasty do you hope to build uh, with Omaha Women's Soccer? The message to this group has always been that I think when they're ready, I thought we could win multiple championships together. Um, but I don't want that to be the end of it either. But the reality is that I think with the whole group coming back, we didn't play a player in the final who's not going to be back uh, for another year at least. Um Gosh, I hope it's something we can keep doing and we can keep achieving and we can you know, win regular season titles and, and postseason titles. But it's always a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. Everything has to go right. Everything has to fall in place. But as long as they stick together and we keep this group together, I feel like this doesn't have to be the end for us. Coach Sophia, thank you guys so much for joining me. Good luck on Saturday against Notre Dame. Awesome. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Coach Tim Walters, Sophia Green, thanks for watching Mavericks All Access.